Hey, friends out there. This is Thursday, August 3rd, 2023. And it's just about, uh, oh, about um, 17 minutes before 6 in the morning here in Northern California. <coughs> Excuse me. And as usual, today I'm going to talk about a few different things. I hope everybody's doing as well as they can in a crazy-ass world run by maniacal, money-loving madmen bent on misery for masses. Yes, friends, as difficult as they make our lives, life's, life is still good. By the grace of God, life is still good. It's nice to be alive. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. Life's good. And I hope everybody can feel what I'm trying to impart and convey that, um, you know, I think we should all be very grateful to have human existence. It's pretty cool to be made in these godlike creatures. You know, we're at the top of the food chain here on planet Earth. We're what it's all about, the human being. And uh, we can't forget that. You know, these are truths given to us by our owner, by the creator, God Almighty. And, um, you know, we've got to cling on to those things, cleave to them. And know that the most important truths are eternal. And um, the truth is inexhaustible. You know, the truth about how to please God and find true happiness is by following his commandments. And while I'm not speaking in particular of the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments will fall into place if we just follow the simple rules that Christ gave us. That is to love God above all else, which is, I mean, you know, what would we know about love without life, without existence? And who gave us that? I mean, we've got to understand we don't own ourselves unless any one of us created ourselves. And who can claim that? That's, I mean, that's like prima facie delusional. Anybody that thinks, you know, their mindset, it's, it's easy for humans to get into a warped mindset. There's so many forces out there, organic and inorganic, stressors, trials, tribulations. It's hard to be a human. And the older I get, the more empathy I have for everybody. I mean, this fact that death, death, I mean, can you what is death? It's like in our, own, in our human minds, our little mortal, pathetic human minds, it's a really bad thing to lose somebody we love. I mean, that's horrible, horrific, terrible, tragic. Nothing could be worse. It's dark and vile and disgusting and horrible. I just, I'm starting to repeat the adjectives, the pejorative adjectives for death. So it doesn't help to put blinders on and say, well, this doesn't bother me. Of course it bothers you. And it's nice to know that our owner understands that it bothers us. Inherently, it can't help but bother us, all of us. And it's an organic stressor. So even evil men and women, mankind, I speak of womankind too, but, um, you know, they can be very evil and not even be aware of it. Some people are deliberately evil. I can't understand that. You know, it's like deliberately choosing madness over a sound mind. But this world is rife with that kind of thinking. And it trickles down. It starts at the uppermost echelons of power. Always. The power in this world is largely in the money. It really, I mean, it's really, it sounds oversimplified, but really it is. Without the money, the evil forces that are ruling this world currently, temporarily, thank God, 
I, I can't believe otherwise. I cannot believe that evil would run this world in perpetuity. And that's not what the scriptures say. Clearly, Christ spelled it out that the good guys end up winning this. That's the good news. That's the grounds to be optimistic. But as far as intelligence goes, while evil genius is really smart and you got to kind of get in their mind and see what they're up to, see why they're evil, why they're mean to the masses, when the masses could be free universally, secure, all of us born filthy rich because it's a thus saith the Lord, our parents, our divine parents, our owners, the creator God Almighty says so. Having nothing to do with money at all. Can't have money. Can't have bartering. No way for any man to get ahead of another man. And bartering, you could do that. It's got to be just as simple as all the other creatures. If they can get along fine without money, have no use for it, wouldn't want it if they could understand it, then why can't we? You understand the power therein? What I'm talking about, trying to convey to you, trying to impart. You've fundamentally got to know how evil genius rules. But one thing they, that's so smart is that they've foregone their conscience, their soul, their very soul. Some on purpose because they're defiant unbelievers and they just say, screw you, God. If there is a God, you're an a-hole. And they've got all this empirical evidence they could point to. Look at what your so-called loving, all-powerful, all-competent God can allow thorns on roses to vex the souls of men. He hates, hates you. Can't you see all the evidence? He's allowing this brutal, punishing heat. He's allowing this bitter, freezing cold. He allows stinging insects that can kill you. He allows every type of disease. And he allows death. That's your so-called love. <clears throat> so, you understand how you can rationalize in your mind. You become delusional like them. And that's what has trickled down delusion and division and disempowerment and confusion. They need us to remain stupid and disunited. If there's one thing with this upcoming presidential election that we as Americans got to do, Democrats and Republicans and whoever in between, is just at least say, please, God, we need you. Let your will be done. Who you want to rule this country then you put them in office, okay, whoever that may be. If it's RFK Jr., let your will be done, Father, whoever it may be, okay? That's what we should all do, just as good Americans, just as good human beings, just as trying to please our parents and find true happiness, living as brothers and sisters, the commands of Christ are so simple. Love God above all else. And he said, the second law, the second commandment I'm giving you is this. Love one another as you love yourselves. What does it mean to love each other? It means to care in a deep, very genuine, profound way. Care about each other. Just like we really were all blood brothers and sisters, because we are. We are one race, one family, one species, and until we live accordingly, we're never going to please our parents. I, I mean, there are certain things that are as clear as light of day, because some people say the Lord works in mysterious ways, as if that's a way to obfuscate, you know, the, the glaring reality. The glaring reality is that egalitarianism is not equatable with Marxism. Although that's the kind of rhetoric you might hear from your college professors. And then so that, whoa, you know, the Red Scare, McCarthyism. I've got to watch my P's and Q's. They're going to think I'm a Russian communist or something, you know, Chinese commie here. No, actually, I'm a capitalist. I mean, I've read Adam Smith, probably the world's greatest economist book, The Wealth of Nations. I perused it. I highlighted nuggets in there. I mean, if you get a chance to read it, read it. It's a great read. And uh, But I would only recommend one edition, this one right here. So if you can find this edition, get it. It's the fat boy. 
the wealth of nations. But, um, you know, Adam Smith points out, with all his stead, devoted his life to the study of economics, you know, capitalism and this, that each nation's, every nation's greatest asset is its workforce. Just simple, common, often uneducated labor, the producers, those that have something to trade with other nations that have enriched it. I mean, if we're going to play a game, we it should at least be fair. But the game we're forced to play from birth is so far from fair, it's not funny. It really is. And that's why I say, I mean, look, money is a very powerful entity. It's, it's a disease of the mind, the love of money. And I have... I, the older I get, the more I study this subject, I realize that it too easily corrupts the hearts and minds of people. And what is written in Scripture is true. What God said is true. That the love of money is the root of all evil. It is akin to a false competing God. What's it competing for? For our affection. Affection. Love. TLC. And attention. And does it get its share? Oh, it does, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? While every other creature is completely free, devoid of this entity, this spirit of darkness that infects our very souls, all of ours, we're all culpable. As long as I'm using money, I'm culpable. I feel guilty and shameful in the sight of my God. How, how dare I think about living an extravagant lifestyle, enjoying being prosperous just because God endowed me with the intelligence to do so. How dare I, th when there's better men and women than me, better safe than sorry, to, to presume that, err on the side of safety, assume there's better men and women than you out there on the streets, suffering needlessly and sometimes dying out in the cold. That's what our society says is okay, that we should keep on tolerating, and more and more of it. Well, they're weak. They can't compete, and it's capitalism. So, I mean, unless you're a communist, you get with the program here. Yeah, it's, there's going to be some dudes, weak links that got to die. You know, society would be better off without these. They're dragging us down. We don't need these weak people. It's so freaking vile and evil and perverted. I mean, I just think, looking through God's eyes, and we all have the ability to do that. Children have the ability to do that. It's as simple as saying, hey, God's the best that a parent you can imagine. How much do your parents genuinely love you, children? So how much more do you, does the Creator God Almighty love us that owns every bit of us, not only our bodies but our soul, and decides where we go from here? I mean, the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. The beginning is that you say, wow, I better watch my P's and Q's. I shouldn't worry so much about the laws of man because every one of us is probably breaking one of those every day or has or will or some variation thereof, okay? And all the ones that make sense will fall into place if we live by the golden rule in treating others the way we want to be treated, loving others the way we love ourselves, by loving God first. So these are the laws. Jesus said, if you just do those two things, it sums up the law and the prophets. So it's so much easier and simple to just follow God's rule. It's not religious at all. The relationship he wants with you and me is a friendship. That's it. A friend. Imagine that. The the Creator God Almighty, His Son Jesus Christ, and this Spirit of Truth, this Spirit of Holiness and Goodness and Righteousness and Pureness that is available to all of us all the time, wants the very best for us. Duh. Duh. What would you want if you were that God? It all makes perfect sense when seen through God's lens and He's calling all of us up. Come on, you got to fight this battle. you got to win. <laughs> you got to overcome this 